Parker again. Thank you everyone for hanging in with us this week. This is Sandra Delarippa from Harvest Development Group and I know I just touched my face and I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> um, we have uh, a great guest to end this week and we are going to continue these for another two weeks. Every weekday at noon uh, right here on our Facebook page are Do Good Better Luncheon live streams. We have an expert every single day, and I have to tell you, we've had re received feedback over the last six episodes, and people have really been um, finding them very helpful with some really good uh, points. So today, uh, we have Lauren Linville. She's the owner of Optimum Consulting in Florida. Um, she has great credentials uh, from the U.S. Coast Guard. She has been very involved in disaster relief and uh, planning and disaster governance uh, through uh, membership organization she's a part of, executive board she's been on, um, tremendous influence, tremendous insight, and she's gonna walk us through what nonprofits need to think about now, which is the time, uh, and the lessons learned in order to be better prepared next time. So Lauren, thank you for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Uh, first off, you know, thanks to everyone that has uh, joined on today and uh, for you to, to set up this series. Um, this is incredibly challenging times for everyone. I don't think anybody, I know our topic is planning, but I don't think anyone could have planned uh, quite for uh, this. Um, so having this option, and particularly for our nonprofit um, organizations um, who are going to be challenged in the future. Um, is, is good to kind of have these series. So I, I appreciate you having me. Um, so I think first I kind of wanted to talk about what emergency management um, is, because I think a lot of people sort of think it in very linear terms. You know, they think it's, you know, just hurricanes and uh, forest fires and flooding. Um, they think of their police and, and firefighters and their EMS, but we can see now with this pandemic that it is so much more than that. And, you know, when we look at our first responders being those fire and the law enforcement, um, now we're looking at our nurses and our doctors and those folks that are at the front lines, you know, so there's, you know, really the, you know, four phases of emergency management. And I think what we normally see and what people are typically when I work with folks, they, they are only thinking of that response and that recovery. Mm -hmm. There, there isn't these two extra phases um, at the very beginning, which is why people, you know, tend to call me or our, our experts, um, which is that mitigation phase and our planning phase. And that's sort of what we're going to talk about a little bit today and how that's going to help with the nonprofit sector. But um, and I think that's really important. I'm so glad you're starting there. You know, my background was uh, I have 30 years in nonprofit executive leadership, but 10 of them were spent leading uh, alongside other um, uh, vice presidents in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And uh, no one is more prepared than a hospital. We had drills um, at least monthly, a quarterly. Yep. And so when something did happen, you knew immediately what was happening and the communication was in place. So I'm glad we're starting here. Yes. Yeah. And it's funny because I just did a, a speech um, in January and this is when, you know, the coronavirus was just starting to make its way into the U.S. And I think at that point, we only actually had two cases at two different hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I had said to the group, you know, what, um, uh, do you have a, a coronavirus uh, plan? Does any, is anyone starting to think about this? And yes, only this past January. This past January. I mean, think this was only two months ago. So, I mean, just two months ago, you know, asking the, the question, you know, who is, who's starting to think about this? This is starting to build in, in China and other parts of our, our world. And to my surprise, only a few people raised their hands and they were, you know, uh, uh, medical industry leaders, mm -hmm. right? because they're the ones that have to be the front lines and you're looking around the room and a lot of the folks there they kind of are looking at you like well we don't have to plan for this that's this right. is this is this is a medical issue this is a that's a that's a healthcare industry issue this isn't going to affect my little small business where it's not going to affect my nonprofit. It's not going to affect me as, you know, this type of business over here and look how it's affected all of us. Yes, absolutely. We, you know, so what I hear you say is we should have seen this coming, but we didn't. So what are some things that we can do when we don't see it coming or when we, uh, 
feel that there's something out there, but it's not at our front door yet. Right. So, I mean, uh, to go back to those two phases, right, uh, that mitigation and that planning phase, you know, that mitigation part of it is your due diligence part, right? What can we do now that we know are known issues, um, that we've had issues with in the past um, that have played a role in our, in, our, in our threat to our business, right? So if, if uh, we haven't, you know, we had an issue with our insurance before, are we checking with our insurance providers and our agents um, so that, you know, we can reach out to them and, and check our policies. We knew that was an issue before. Do we need to revisit that mm -hmm. um, and try to do a little bit more due diligence? And mm -hmm. of course, the most important part is the planning part of it, right? Are we, are we making plans? Do we have plans in place? Are they tailored to whatever the threat or that, you know, potential disaster could be so that we know how to respond and we're getting that message out and sort of disseminating that to the folks around us? So, mm -hmm. and you're right, there, you, some of these things, um, they, you, they, you can't expect them to happen. You know, I think Bill, you know, we were just talking uh, earlier before this about Bill Gates. Yeah. You know, he, it's like he called this several years ago, 2013, when he did his TED Talk. You know, and here we are, you know, talking about this now, and no one ever expected this to be at their doorsteps. I know only six months ago, we're still in the recovery efforts of Hurricane Dorian. I'm working with a nonprofit organization right now for their recovery efforts because they are very much in that recovery stage mm -hmm. of trying to rebuild the, the islands on the, the Abaco Islands. You know, and here we're dealing with a, a crisis of coronavirus that, you know, I think is so important, you know, that we understand, you know, we have to, we have, to have a plan in place now to make sure that our operations down there are maintaining because guess what? In two months, it's hurricane season all over again. So, so they're in a storm in a storm, really. I mean, many right. places are right now. Absolutely. So I think it's important to have a plan in place, obviously. Um, you know, uh, it, it depends on what type of plan that you're trying to make. You know, you want to make sure for us, when we're looking at our different organizations, we're looking at trying to tailor whatever that plan might be. You know, are we trying to, res you know, respond, uh, you know, to another natural disaster? Are we trying to get our operations back to being normal? You know, are, are we trying to get it more of a continuity back to, to our operations? You know, um, right now there's been a lot of talk of how this is going to um, challenge us uh, in our mental health. You know, do we have a do we have a plan in place to kind of combat that? You know, these are sort of some of the things that we need to be thinking of. And frankly, because we are two months away, you know, from hurricane season. Unfortunately, you live on the East Coast too, mm. seeing that that can happen up along the coastline there. You know, we need to also be thinking about, yes, we are here and dealing with this issue, but the way, you know, my brain sort of works is, okay, we're, we're in the here and now, yes, mm -hmm. but what is this gonna look like in two months too? You know, so asking those questions, you know, kind of um, figuring out what it is and what kind of plan that we wanna make. And then also kind of doing a SWOT analysis of, you know, our, where we are, where we see in our organization. So when we build our plans out, we wanna know what kind of plans we, we sit down and do sort of a SWOT, what are our, our strengths, our weaknesses, um, in, our, in our threats, um, in our opportunities, you know, uh, and kind of build um, along that path there. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, very, ask very pointed questions. Um, who are our stakeholders? Mm -hmm. You know, in this case, who are our donors? You know, um, uh, how, are we providing any sort of feedback or getting feedback from the people that work for us, the things that worked well in the past? The things that didn't work well mm -hmm. you know what did we do right what do we want to see and continue to do right mm -hmm. um uh, and, and for nonprofits, the one thing that we have been saying to folks is um who can we look to partner with at this point what other nonprofits can we look to partner with mm -hmm. i mean as we're going to start seeing some uh, changes in our do donor support how can we use our other partnerships to um help each other out you know, down uh, again with the one, uh, the uh, the client in um, in the Bahamas. You know, we're looking at different nonprofits that we can potentially 
uh, partner with now because we know that we may not have the type of funding that we once did and the resources that we were able to once have. You know, so unfortunately, it's, it's something that we're all going to have to deal with um, in this phase as we see what, you know, the coronavirus is doing uh, to our economy. And we have to start thinking out of the box now and putting it to pen and paper for a plan later. So those are some of the things that you can you can start thinking about, I think, um, in terms of at least for a nonprofit is who have we been able to rely on in the past and who can we partner with now that has those, those different resources that we can use together, mm -hmm. you know? And then I think from a, um, a documentation standpoint, because we know they just passed or they're going to pass this $2 trillion stimulus package, or at least we hope, you know, that there's a little piece in the pie for nonprofits in there too, but mm -hmm. that's only going to be as effective as how we're documenting as well. And documentation is so incredibly important. Everything that your organization is doing right now needs to be put to pen and paper. What are the challenges that you're having? What were the threats that you saw? You know, and put those so that you can do some sort of, you know, after action for later that you can add back into your plan. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's incredibly important now more than ever that you're writing these things down so that way you can revisit them later and say, okay, you know what, this is, we've never dealt with this before. I'm mm -hmm. sure we might, uh, this might come up a little bit later. You know, we might have to evacuate and do something um, very similar with, you know, if there's another natural disaster, what are the things that worked well? What are the things that, that, that didn't work so well? And how do we go about putting that into our next, uh, the, the next phase of our plans? Mm -hmm. So much packed in to what you just said in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and luckily we have time. We're going to unpack this and we have questions coming in like crazy. So um, let if I, if I might, can I bring you back to uh, point number one, which is the term mitigation. Mm. So what I understand you to mean there is determining the key imperatives, the things that you have to think about, right? right. Um, we have, we have nonprofits in crisis. And this week, I think everybody was scrambling to try to figure out, first of all, where, are, where is everyone, right? Yeah. We, we all went to the four winds. Mm -hmm. uh, how are we going to bring everybody together as a unit when a culture exists that lives in a building or in an office, and then suddenly it's separated by distance and technology? Does that culture still remain? So we spent a lot of time doing that. Yep. Um, and now I think piece of, nonprofits that we work with are starting to put the pieces together and they've decided they're either uh, needed, so they're running into this storm with services, mm -hmm. they're relevant, meaning they can stand in the gap and help with some of the things like homeschooling or, or um, mental health, or they're not necessary. So they're mm -hmm. gonna stand aside from this, but like the Bahama uh, nonprofit, continue to do what they need to do. Correct. So we're at a point now where they're processing, how do they take time now, Lauren, to begin to look at what they might need in the future. And if you could help us understand what should they be looking at? Yeah, I mean, for, um, for a situation, you know, like this, like I said, we want to start documenting everything, you know, it, and it might be prudent to have um, uh, maybe a, a set person in your organization that mm -hmm. is kind of, you know, documenting these things and sort of writing these down. And what is so important is putting, like I said, those things to, to uh, pen to paper. Um, so for us, you know, uh, you know, when we're looking at um, uh, developing those plans, um, who are the people in, you know, part of your team who are managing sort of this incident and saying, you know, we, we need to make these decisions here. We need to be reactive in this way. How do we make our organization more resilient, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So going back to that, what you said, the mitigation phase, that due diligence there, you know, can also be very, you know, simple acts, you know. So this is before, you know, we know that a, that a, um, uh, that a situation is approaching, right? This is, this is far, uh, this is uh, before all of that starts, mm -hmm. right? Those simple acts of like, I know, you know, uh, the, um, for example, um, uh, like the, ins the insurance issue, 
-hmm. you know i know that we had some issues with our policies and procedures that that didn't work that's when it's time to change that now when you're moving into that planning phase you know seeing what our strengths and then our weaknesses are you know moving into a you know what kind of plan that we need in order to be more resilient taking the things from our mitigation that due diligence phase and then putting that to 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 pen to paper mm -hmm. um you know and you can do this very easily you know by looking at resources um by going to like uh, for example fema.gov they have templates in place there if you go to right. their library yep if you right. go to their library there um you can actually see some of those um what we call continuity of operations plans how mm -hmm. do we get back into to, to um being in normal operations mm -hmm. um how are we going to be responding? Do we have communication lists? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so some of the some of the things that people might be asking, you know, I've, I've never had to contact this person before. Mm -hmm. Write that down. That's going to be part of your plan. You know, I've never had to call this person a vendor or contract for support before. Write that down. That might be an ally that you have later. You know, um, if you're noticing that some of your vendors and your contractors haven't been as responsive this time before, um, and maybe they can't be because they're also being affected of it, uh, mm -hmm. affected by this, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you have letters of guarantee um, uh, going forward. You know, that's one of the things that are very important in your, your planning process is who can we rely on which vendors and contractors can we rely on in order to to get what we need to in order to get back into uh, normal operations so you know those letters of guarantee are incredibly important especially if you are in a in a working in a building that might have been struck by some sort of disaster mm -hmm. or in this case you know what kind of infrastructure or IT infrastructure um, do you have in place at home you know are there organizations out there that do more remote type um, uh, IT um, type packages you know that you can call on and say you know I'm not in my executive suite anymore and I'm not in this building and I'm having you know um, issues at home with my printer my hardware my software you know those will be the, the type of things that you'll write into your plans um, and to contact those folks and have those resources available. So that way, you know, uh, when you are in a situation where we're all working from home now, working remotely, being um, using different software than we have in the past, we'll have those resources available um, at their our fingertips. And that was what's most important. But I think the other part of this is you have to remember, um, if you're at the point where you have to reach for something, reach for a plan that isn't there, you know, you, you or there's no, there's no sort of like uh, uh, written instruction, mm -hmm. uh, then it's time to start thinking about maybe I need to, you know, start writing this down, putting mm -hmm. that into some sort of report afterwards, you know, because typically if you're already reaching for it, you're probably a one step behind or two yeah, steps right. behind. And I think many of us, our firm included, we're totally caught off guard by this. Absolutely. A lot of working from home and the disruption to our service line, the disruption to our clients was a thought and it was, and maybe we were overconfident or maybe we were under expecting, but I think we were all caught by it. I love the FEMA.gov resource. Thank you for that. People can mm -hmm. go there and, and get some of these documents. Right. Um, and so, you know, the data, uh, the um, due diligence mitigation really is about, and I love the idea of having someone right now reporting. That right. is, that's probably a really easy implemented yeah. concept right now. Mm -hmm. Even if we are a week in, there is someone in your organization that can just journal for the weekend what just happened and then keep track of that over the coming weeks and and the things that i heard you say were look at people and roles mm -hmm. tools outside support operations technology um we actually have a really good question about outside uh, about outside support and partners and that is um uh how we can change as nonprofits. how can we change our perspective from what do we need today to how can we prepare for the future and future obstacles? Um, and the other part of that question, the first part is how important are partners in this plan? Yeah, I mean, leadership is key, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, leaders, it, you know, I always say that emergency management isn't an industry, it's a people. You know, so, you know, you can, as we're seeing now, it's not as linear as being a hurricane, as being a, you know, a flood or, or being a fire. It can be this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And if your leadership is not um, tied in to what you're trying to do and mm -hmm. they're not listening, mm -hmm. then you need to learn how to speak their language, right? And that mm -hmm. could go for your other partners as well. Getting everybody on the, the same page. And what I mean by speaking their language, is you know what is important to them you know um if you know for example um i work with a lot of um, businesses who you know they're very you know financially driven well how is this going to input you know the inputs and outputs of these things affect their bottom lines mm -hmm. you know a lot of people are are safety um driven you know um by uh by uh, talking to those folks and saying you know are you know this could be a legal issue this could be a safety thing you know um, you have to speak to the, the to the leadership and your partners and kind of getting them all on the same page. But having meetings, kind of preparing for this in advance, mm -hmm. and also building a, you know, a business process uh, flowchart too. You know, where do I fall in to this, uh, this flowchart? You know, where do I, where, what is my responsibility when an incident happens? You know, and that can also be part of, you know, um, making your plans as well. Um, where, uh, you know, um, from, a, from a leadership standpoint, it is up to you, you know, it, what's a, leadership is everybody, but it's really up to the, the leaders of the organizations to kind of disseminate all of that positive, you know, messaging out there too, and getting uh, that, those resources out to them and saying, this is how uh, we're going to respond uh, to whatever this incident might be. And if you're not speaking that language, and this also can be from the folks that are actually working for your nonprofits and your other organizations, trying to put that message out to those industry leaders, you know, and, and saying, listen, I've, I've seen that this was a problem in the past. This is what I want to do now going forward. And again, putting it in terms that those folks understand and that will ultimately affect them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we do our due diligence, we do this assessment and doing it now through documenting what's happening is probably trial by fire, but maybe one of the most authentic ways to Absolutely. figure out where the gaps are, right? Absolutely. And so then we want to put it into a plan. Um, what, what are the components of a plan? What does that look like a plan? Because, you know, not everybody is really good at structuring plans. Uh, are there specific aspects of it? Do we, do we yeah. practice a plan? Who do we share it with? Exactly. I'm so glad that you say that because this is really important too. So when you, um, of course, you want to have a structure in place, you know, mm -hmm. who is doing what? Um, mm -hmm. You want to also ask, you know, very pointed questions, you know, who are our stakeholders? Mm -hmm. um, uh, what um, training programs have we uh, put in place? Mm -hmm. And also, you know, once we disseminate those plans, are we acting on them? Is there any sort of exercise that we can do now in order to be better at um, being more uh, pro, you know, to be more proactive than to just be very reactive? No plan is going to help if you're not practicing it. And what we say, you know, practice makes perfect. That's the same thing when it comes to these things, actually challenging ourselves to not only just put that into um, putting it from pen to paper, but also to actually uh, uh, do some sort of exercise in the process um, as well. But, you know, um, the one thing that I always like to ask is, you know, what are the, what are the first three things that I do? you know, when I know that there's an incident that's, that's happening, you know, what are your, your first three instincts or what are the first three things that you try to do? And a lot of the times, you know, people will say to me, uh, to call my employee, call my employees, uh, start, you know, making these phone. And there's, it's amazing that um, a lot of times people don't even realize that making a plan is actually very simple. It's just taking the steps that I would normally want um, or need to do but putting them into more actionable terms. So, so that it's not just up here anymore, it's actually on a piece of paper, you know? And that's why that, um, uh, the lessons learned piece are, are so important after all of this is said and done and having somebody that's actually writing 
um, all of this information down in these sort of lessons and, and actionable terms and putting that into piece, pieces. But you definitely want to have your, um, your organizational structure. Mm -hmm. Who is doing what piece? Mm -hmm. Are there, do you have any sort of communications um, plan in place? Um, what does your IT infrastructure potentially look like? You know, our facility maintenance, you know, are there type of, um, is, 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 is our infrastructure going to also be potentially damaged in the process or how is that um, structure is going to, to change? And I think it's really important also to note that, you know, plans are very broad and they're not all going to be, you know, every plan is going to be different for your industry as well. You know, so, you know, when we look at things, we ask very, you know, pointed questions because you can look at those templates and they will give you sort of an outline of what you need to do. But at the end of the day, it's really up to um, your organization to sit down with somebody um, and, and say, listen, I've thought of all of these things, you know, but um, we kind of misstepped here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's why, you know, once you create sort of this structure, you know, think about all of the questions that might actually come up in your organization, mm -hmm. you know, um, like the working from home, you know, how are we going to go about now working from home in this new structure? Who's going to be in charge of answering, you know, the, the phone and who's going to be in charge of talking to our, you know, our donors now? Are we, you know, who's going to call our partners? I mean, these are all of the things that, you know, you want to be thinking about when you talk about your operations, you know, so actually having a more of a response plan to what you have going on, but now being thinking in terms of how do I get back to normal operations? What does that look like? So that when we are, we start going into that recovery phase, um, we can smoothly transition mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It makes total sense. And as you were talking, I'm thinking, do we need, Lauren, do we need two different sets of plans? Because emergencies can be emergent, as this one was, you mm -hmm. kind of just saw it coming. Yes. Or they can be urgent. There's a fire in the building. Or right. you know, there's an unknown, not all tornadoes can be tracked. So suddenly right. there's a tornado. Uh, do we need two sets of plans or does one suffice with different so aspects? I get this question all the time. Any sort of incident that might happen, you might need a plan for. So having one just for, you know, say a hurricane and how we're going to respond to that uh, might be one of your plans. Mental health might be another one of your plans. How are we going to cope with um, some of the, the issues here? Security mm -hmm. might be another plan. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know, uh, we, unfortunately, we live in a, in a world where, you know, there's active shooters and, um, these sort of different threats that we're facing, you know, that might be another plan. Mm -hmm. um, a fire might be another plan. And again, we're not talking about something that has to be like this thick that's sticking in your, in, um, on your bookshelf. You know, this is just a way for uh, you to um, continue your operations um, and respond to them accordingly. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you want to be able to protect your business and get back online as quickly as you can. But if people are running around and they don't know that they need to call this person over um, at the city maybe, or this person over at the fire department, or talk to this legislator over here, you know, in order to um, talk about maybe some things that are affecting them, a piece of legislation that just came out, or, you know, am I a non-essential business versus an essential business um, in this situation? You know, these are some of the things that, you know, can be, um, uh, that can be acted upon if you have them you know, written down. Mm -hmm. um, and the other piece of that is, again, that documentation, who is going to be documenting all of this? How are we going about, how are we going about saving this, uh, the documentation so that we can look to, you know, the public assistance um, opportunities out there? Because we're not going to be able to get those unless we have the documentation, um, you know, written down for that for later reimbursement. So we have, um, we have another, we have so many good questions and I'm, I'm having trouble keeping up. So <laughs> we're a few minutes over, it's okay. Cause I think, That's okay. I, you know what? I think as an industry, we've gotten over the shock. We started this series with a, a brilliant doctor on what we're feeling. And really she 
she nailed it when she said mm -hmm. we're all feeling grief yes. right because we're not working the way we used to work yeah and then we move through how to break out of our inertia how to communicate so this is a natural progression and i really do think based on our experience and conversations nonprofits are now starting to say okay what's the and then like what yeah. happens in a few weeks when this dust settles and this emergency has passed so this is really timely if we go a few minutes over i'm okay um when i was in the hospital uh, we would have these types of emergency plans really locked down. Of mm -hmm. course, we, uh, hospitals have safety officers and other people in yeah. charge, but they were really locked down and we would practice. So, you know, one of our question is how often should you review your plan or mm -hmm. practice your plan to make sure it's relevant, but also, Lauren, to find those gaps, those right. things that didn't work, right? The breakdown. Yeah, minimally uh, annually. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Or when you know that, that something is forthcoming. So you can look at a timeline that at least says, you know, annually we're gonna look at this um, and we're going to practice um, this plan and we're gonna revisit it every single year because typically something changes every single year that you can add to it or subtract from it, mm -hmm. right? So once you have a baseline of your plan, you can um, revisit it on an annual basis. Now for me personally, I always recommend that when I see something Kind of coming right we know that hurricane season is coming we know that um we might have some you know issues you know texas they had all of the the flooding issues with mm -hmm. um you know their hurricanes uh you know with uh harvey um uh, we need to revisit that we then we need to just practice once more right um these are the players uh that we need to bring into this and identify those early on so you may revisit it every single year but your players might also change you know i always say it's the the jokes on us that you know labor day and a lot of these holidays that kind of come into play are when people are off work right you might you know um my husband had a, a an employee that went on a cruise around the same time that uh, hurricane season happened and we actually had a, a hurricane hit us and he was the one person that was supposed to you know do this one part of the plan well guess what then it had to be shifted to do um to, to be somebody else luckily that was written in and you know uh, in that person ends up being um uh, needed for uh, the exercise right so don't also think of um a skeleton crew type of exercise too, where you're only gonna have this person, you know, this person, this person kind of do the exercise. You need the whole group involved. And again, that kind of sets the tone from the top. If your leaders are um, are invested in your plan, they'll say, you know, we'll kind of do a, a little bit of a stand down today with operations and we're gonna dedicate the morning to, to to sort of practice this and put it into some sort of like exercise. Um, so I think that is also very um, important as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, wow. So, you know, due diligence, um, having someone document now, get some forms off of FEMA.gov, I'm sure your organization as well. So, mm -hmm. so if people are looking at this now going, okay, I, I, I can document this, but mm -hmm. how do I pull this together and how do I know that I'm not missing what I don't know. Your firm helps to do this for them? Is that Optima Consulting? Yes, yeah, so again, we, we look at everything um, from, the, uh, from an organizational standpoint and we kind of custom build you know, to help mitigate any sort of threats for um, your organization. Um, if you, you know, I, a lot of people say, well, I'm a nonprofit, you know, I, I maybe can't afford that right now, um, you know, there are other, you know, uh, resources that you can use. Um, you know, for us, we look at it like insurance, you know. Absolutely. I don't know if anybody can afford not to. And, and I think, you know, personally too, you know, when you look at your other donor supports and other organizations, um, when you have these systems built in, people feel more comfortable and they're wanting to invest more into your organization. But you can also look at your municipalities a lot of the um, county organizations, you know, they have emergency managers, you know, at, from the uh, directors and management type level that will, um, that could also be available to, to help, at least if you have a one-off question. Of course, you know, we, um, we do uh, free consultations for everybody that calls um, and, you know, we kind of walk through um, some of the questions that you might have and then, 
you know, kind of build upon something if that's uh, a direction that you want to take. Sure. But another point that I wanted to make real quickly, because mm -hmm. I think this is really important, is also budgeting um, for uh, your, your plan as well. And, and for your organization, because all of this ends up costing money and you don't know what you're going to get back in sort of reimbursement. So the other part of this is also to make sure that you have a plan um, or built within your plan a budget and, and be you know, conscious of that as you're sort of you know, either saving for something or you know, you're, you're at least documenting it so you know how much it's gonna cost yourself and your firm in the future. You know, this whole concept of using this disruption, this disaster and chaos to plan for the future mm -hmm. is so tremendously valuable. And what we know about donors, and it doesn't matter if it's corporations, individuals, grantors, they want to invest in your organization for something that is valuable and worthy. Mm -hmm. So just going through the process of documenting all of this and identifying some needs that exist is a wonderful way, I think, from my experience, to go back to your donor community and say, look, we need you to step up and help fund this yes. and maybe find a champion because yeah. every organization, I think, is suffering right now from a lack of uh, the type of emergency planning that you've just outlined for us here. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and also look at, you know, um, logistically how your operation um, or your organization is operating, you know, your, you know, your supply chains, mm -hmm. you know, again, back to your vendors, but how are we going about moving, you know, if you're an organization that actually has to move material, or if you're an organization um, that is very people oriented, you know, you know, it also, um, you know, our organization also is very humanitarian at the same time, and we do work with a lot of nonprofits, and we are very people oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, how are how is that going to be built in? So that is kind of uninterrupted as well. Yeah. Wow, this has been this has really been a great thirty seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to pin this to the top of our page as soon as we're done. And um, Lauren Linville from Optimum Consulting, uh, she said contact her. She is happy to chat with you about Absolutely. specific questions. Uh, great resource in FEMA.gov. Migrate out there and look at some of those forms. Um, we are going to keep this going, Lauren. We're not going to be able to do this every day as a firm. We don't have the resources, but for the next two weeks, we are going to do them every day. And then we're going to go back down to probably once a week, but we would love to stay in touch with you because I think there's so much more that we could talk about this. So Yeah. And if anybody out there has a question, please feel free to reach out. Um, we know everybody is really struggling right now in any way that we can help. Um, we will. So thank you for doing this. This was thank great. You. This is great. Thanks so much. Guys, we'll see you Monday. We have another great lineup next week. Uh, again, we're going to do these for the next two weeks, uh, foreseeable future, and then drop back down to once a week. But we love having you. We know that people are coming back to view these recordings in the thousands. So thank you again, Lauren, and other uh, individual professionals out there that have stepped up to help us with this project. Really, really appreciate it. We're standing in the gap. I think we were all built to do this. So thanks again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.